Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Libra for November 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, check out my blog, and check out my new school, my Astaria School of Practical Magic, where I assist you with ancient wisdom and science wisdom that helps you to bring magic of the unseen realms into your practical reality. So what's going on in the month of November? We're still in this great push to move things forward through November 15th. We are free from personal abundance being retrograde. This is the second to last window we have before the wall of retrogrades of personal planets starts in March of 2018. So if you've got things on your mind, if you need a little bit of a spark, a fire under your butt, this is a really good time to try to push things forward. Of course, if it's not in the flow and intuitively it's not time, you just can't do it. But if you just need a little bit of push, the, the stars are with you at this point um, to, to move forward. So until around the 15th of November, and then there will be a couple of dates you can squeak some things in towards the end of the month, and I'll talk about those in the general transits. So before I get into my extensive report about the general transits, I want to talk about some things specific for Libra. We have a very powerful full moon at the beginning of the month, November 3rd. This is at almost 12 degrees of Taurus. What brings this more power is that there are so many aspects that are going on between the 1st and the 4th of November and the full moons on the 3rd. So there is just a massive amount of energy that's weaving into this full moon that's not necessarily related to it, but it's becoming related to it because it's happening at the same time. And I will break down those transits and what goes along with them when I go in the general transits. But for now, I want to talk about the fact that of where it's occurring for Libras. So full moons bring fruition, completion, um, drama, elucidation, things coming to light, things, you know, being accomplished, wonderful emotions, bad emotions, just, it's very emotional, you know? In the days around the full moon, there's often an emotional welling up. And there can be happy tears or not happy tears. So the early degree placement, so if your birthday is in the first 10-ish, um, 10 or so days of the sign, or if you're watching for your rising sign, the first zero through nine-ish degrees is early. Um, and let's see, some of you middle degree placements, your early middle degree placements might also feel this in the eighth house, even though for most of you, the full moon is in the seventh house. So early and a little bit of early middle degree placements are either going to have this full moon in or close to the eighth house. The rest of you middle and late degree placements are going to have the full moon in the seventh house. But what's the same about both these houses is they both re relate to personal relationships, one-on-one -on -one relationships. The eighth house can be more about financial relationships, legal relationships, um, things with money, you know, kind of entrenchment, uh, financing, mortgages, things like that. So for the early and some middle, there's this fullness, completion, coming to light, information coming in, accomplishment regarding something involving other people's money. That's what we call the eighth house is the other people's money house. So it's family money, spousal money, money you find in the streets, um, winnings, sweepstakes, inheritances, money you borrow, money you loan out. That's eighth house. So something busy there. There could also be some major spiritual transformation or breakthrough that occurs because the eighth house, besides being this house of the intangible money scene, is also the house of the intangible reality as far as it relates to the esoteric subjects. Um, so there could be something that goes on there. A mystery could be solved. Um, something uh, could occur having to do with deep, intimate relationships, some sort of breakthrough that way. So there also could be a power struggle because this eighth house is ruled by Pluto and having a lot of fullness there can bring some energy into a power struggle. And there's another transit that's occurring at the same time that kind of feed this energy. It could be a major accomplishment, like you get a loan for something that you need, you get financing, you know, um, or you sell something and a whole bunch of money comes in. So these are some ways you can see that occur. For those of you who have this in the seventh house, this is more about the relationship itself. So a relationship of importance comes into the forefront. So that could be a conflict, a fight, a questioning. It could be an awesome breakthrough, an amazing moment or understanding or, you know, joining a forces or accomplishment with a partner. This could be a romantic partner, it could be a business partner, it could be a client, 
you know, something comes to fruition, completion, fulfillment, drama, excitement involving an important relationship of consequence is what I call them. So the new moon is on November 18th. And for all of you, that's going to be pretty much focused on the second house. Some of you late degree placements might have that very, very late, like if you're in the last days of the sign and closer really to Scorpio, you might have it bump into the into the first house. But the rest of you are going to pretty clearly have that in the second house. And even those of you who are in that very late degree placement, it's close enough to the second house for you, the new moon, um, that you'll likely feel it there as well. So what is this highlighting? Okay, new moons bring in new energy. They bring um, open slates, opportunities. Um, you can also watch my video, Making Wishes Come True Using Astrological Power Periods, because on new moons you get wishes. You get 10 wishes. And you can also look at my blog about making powerful new moon and Scorpio wishes. So if you just go to AnnieHelpsYou.com, you click on blog, you can go in the astrology section of the blog and just put in Scorpio wishes and it will pull up the way that you can most align with Scorpio wishes. Because the more that you wish for things under the heading of the sign that the new moon is in, it further aligns your wishes with coming true. So the second house, which is where this is occurring for you all, has to do with money. It has to do with earned income. It's different than the money in the eighth house. That's the intangible merged kind of murky intertwined money. But the second house has to do with your income. It's what you earn. It's your personal finances, your individual money, your individual budget, all of the things having to do with your personal values about money and um, also having to do with how you make money and how much money you make. There's a lot of activity in the second house for all of you. So that could coincide with making more money. Um, that could also coincide with spending more money. So it's just, you know, it's very money focused and it can be also focused on luxury items or like expensive items, or it could be focused on eco-friendly items. There's a spectrum here in the second house that runs from kind of bare bones, salt of the earth, very simple, living in sync with nature, up through the most expensive luxury items that give no regard for, um, for the eco aspect of things, or the hybrid, you know, so luxury eco items. That's, that's, you know, kind of a broad spectrum that we're working with, but it has to do with money. So hopefully you'll have some good new money opportunities. Many people with this placement or many, many Libras will have a chance to make money in a new way um, or just more money. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Libra this month. Um, oh, one other thing. The, the Jupiter and Venus conjunction on November 13th is also going to be centered around this um, second house for you early degree placements. So that is bringing more financial opportunities because Venus rules love, beauty, and money and Jupiter expands. So this conjunction is occurring for the early degree placements in that second house of money and earned income. The middle degree placements and the late degree placements are going to have this in the um, first house. So it still can coincide with a chance to make, make more money, um, but it's just a matter of, it's kind of like in the house of your notoriety, you know, so you could become known for something, be recognized for something, and then it could be really good for your business, something like that. So these are the things that are most on my mind for Libras this month. Now I wanna give you a play-by-play -play of the transits that are going to occur this month, the dates that they're going to occur, what things you can expect with these energies and how to best use them. So the theme of the month for all signs for November 2017 is train your inner hero. And this is on account of a bunch of aspects with Chiron. Chiron is an asteroid. It's named after a gentle centaur in Greek mythology. Many people who follow Chiron in their charts will know that he's known as the wounded healer. So when you're following him in your chart, this is a place where it's like your Achilles heel, you know, your strongest everywhere else except there. That's your, 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 your sore spot, your um, most vulnerable point. But there's another aspect of Chiron that's lesser known, and that is that he was a trainer of heroes. Many of the um, 
figures in Greek mythology, the heroes in Greek mythology that won these victories that we've heard about all this time, they were trained by Chiron. And so as we have aspects with Chiron challenging and more soft, we have this wonderful opportunity not only to work on this tyrant victim polarity that comes up so readily on the earth plane. Um, that's another piece of Chiron is to remember that when we feel like we're a someone is being a tyrant to us, then we're automatically a victim and vice versa. So the belief in any point of that polarity brings perpetuation of the dynamic back and forth and the role playing back and forth. So Chiron assists us to transcend these energies and to drop the story of victimhood and plant the seeds of empowerment. And it also assists us in training our inner hero. So a great trainer will use our weakest spots as not only places to fortify, but also places that make us different than other people that bring us gifts. So you may find many gifts in focusing on your vulnerabilities at this time from these aspects, and that's one of the themes of the month. So we've got lots of Scorpio energies continuing into this month, and they are um, going to continue to bring in the themes that they started in October of deep, deep introspection, um, mysteries, research, psychology, astrology is in there also from the psychological perspective. This is the house and sign, the eighth house, um, of other people's money. So inheritances, shared money, marital money, um, sweepstakes, winning, finding money, money coming from nowhere, debt, credit. All of these are themes that are going to be continuing to be brought up uh, by the Scorpio energies this month. There are many powerful transformations awaiting with this energy because Pluto owns that space of the deepest transformation, birth, death, rebirth, the phoenix rising from the ashes. It's a way that I always like to describe that energy. So we've got that energy present, but at the same time, this lighter, very different Sag energy starts to work its way in. And when Sag energy becomes present, we have the desire for action and movement. Um, adventure and prolific expression, you know, um, it's the sign of luck and it's the energy of optimism um, and also is a very strong intuitive, like following hunches to increase synchronicities um, and increasing the breadth of our experience. Scorpio energy talks about the depth of experience and Sag energy talks about the breadth. So we've got both of those going on this month. So you might find a lot of chances to spiral in and go deep as we also spin out and go really um, wide. Lots of people will find that they are excited about and ready to and having opportunities to travel or do things with different countries, different cultures, different languages. Sag energy is also very much related to publishing projects, writing, editing, teaching, learning, and teaching and learning programs of any kind are Sag's domain. So, and just fun, you know, Sag is a very easy, light-hearted, fun, loving sign. So you'll, you'll feel those energies start to roll in. In November, we are still in that window that started in September of this open time without personal planets being retrograde, but that's only through November 15th. November 15th, the Mercury retrograde shadow period begins. So Mercury doesn't go retrograde in November, but the shadow period starts on the 15th. So every day after the 15th, you start feeling that kind of the mishaps, the miscommunications, stuff with transportation, stuff with the devices coming up. And you can check out my video, um, Mercury Retrograde Do's and Don'ts on my channel, Andy Botticelli Mercury Retrograde. Also, um, you can just tune in to what's happening, you know, and this is one of the most important things that I'd like to teach about astrology is that you can hear about what's going on in the energies, but the more you start to match these dates with feeling into them, that's the biggest thing because you will notice it. I have heard countless people tell me when they start paying attention, oh gosh, Mercury must be retrograde again. Things start slowing down, communications start getting more complicated, things from the past start showing up. So. If you have a big launch or something you want to burst out into the world, 
trying to push it out by the 15th is a really good idea because we don't want your out push to be interfered with by the in roll of Mercury retrograde. Now, that being said, I will talk about a couple of dates after November 15th if you have to push some last minute stuff through that are really nice energies, but try to get the bulk of your gusto out before that time. I always liken this to the idea of being on a deserted island and making a boat. Um, when you try to get off the island, you would not put your boat that you've worked so hard to make, this is your last chance, right? Your only chance to get off the island. You wouldn't put it out when the tide was coming in. It would make no sense. You'd be battling the waves and you probably wouldn't make it. But if you wait, if you watch the tides and you wait until the tide is going out to set your boat afloat, it's much more likely that you're going to reach your destination. So that's why we want to pay attention to these energies. And even though everyone gets, um, well, a lot of people get irritated with, oh, it's Mercury retrograde again. I don't want to hear about this. Well, it's true, but it's, it's important as a rhythm, especially in a world where everything is about go, 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 that we have these beautiful retrogrades that remind us that sometimes it's just time to roll a little bit in and then store and save, hold the gold until we have these good launching points and then push out, you know, and then roll back in. So half the month is in this major push out and then we start moving into this roll back in type of energy. So I'm going to give you some details about some of the aspects to look out for this month and the dates they happen around. Do know that when I give you exact dates that the transits occur on, you could feel those manifestations before or after those dates because it's not a finite point in time that these things are expressing. We often will feel them before or after. So just kind of pay attention. And always there are positive or easier aspects occurring at the same time as the more challenging aspects that are coinciding with each other. So you have to really tune into your own energy flow. And even if a date's supposed to be good for something, if you're feeling really strong the day before, don't be afraid to just bust it out. You have to use this information to follow your own intuitive flow and not let anything else supersede your own inner knowing. Also, when you sign up for my free email newsletter at anniehelpsyou.com, you can get a written version of my general transit reading a month before delivered right into your inbox so you can have a visual on it as far as the dates and the energies that they can bring. So sometimes people like that for um, planning purposes. Okay, so we start out with um, a Mercury and Scorpio trine Chiron and Pisces. This is one of the many Chiron aspects we have this month. That is why I called um, the, the, the theme of the month train your inner hero because of this Chiron presence. And in this, with this combination, and this is like the first through the second, but you could feel it before or after, support could come from inner work or another person as confidence is built through self-acceptance. You know, Chiron, especially in Pisces, is just a very, um, it's an internal healing, anything that makes us feel like we're not right with anything, with ourselves, with the world, you know? So the more we have self-acceptance, the more we can be open to support from other people because we feel like we deserve it. On November 2nd, there's a Saturn and Sag square in Chiron and Pisces. So we have this sweet aspect at the same time as this challenging aspect. So it's like this newfound work with self-acceptance is going to be tested by an authority figure, likely something stern from the outside world. Um, but it could be the other way around. It could be that because something is coming in as harshness, we can choose to use the softer energy to just love ourselves, love the person or the being, whatever it is that's reflecting this to us um, and do good inner work with it. On November 3rd, we have a Sun in Scorpio trine Neptune in Pisces. This first occurred on July 5th and it brings a really great focus on creativity and artistic talents. So you might use that energy purposely for creative or artistic uh, work or you might just find it's naturally brought out of you that you're kind of in that mood. So this is a really um, positive and peaceful combination um, and it's really supportive to assisting self and others. So then on November 3rd, we also have this full moon at almost 12 degrees of Taurus. Full moons bring fullness, completion, fruition to the sign that they are, that it is occurring in. Sometimes it brings drama. Sometimes it brings elucidation, the bringing to light of something. So that will be in the areas of everything Taurian, you know, so this is um, personal finances, your own 
earned income, luxury items, earth eco related projects. Um, this has to do with your values and also has to do with self-esteem. So we've got a really busy time at the beginning of the month because coinciding with this full moon, we also have something else going on on November 3rd, which is Venus in Libra sextiling Saturn in Sagittarius. A sextile is a very favorable aspect. It usually is one that requires you to take action in order to get the good possibility from it. So when Venus and Saturn come together, it's really great for taking steps forward um, with long-term projects. And since there's energy in Libra, it would favor partnerships or, or working with someone on something. Um, and this is a really great launching point for, um, for trying to move forward with things, but it's kind of a mixed bag, you know, because you have all this intensity around. And then the next day you have Venus opposing Uranus in Aries. And so this can bring jolts or overstimulation in the arenas of love or money or self-esteem. You know, so definitely issues with self versus relationship are being brought up. So it's possible that as you have a chance to move forward in partnership, the fears could come up, you know, of merging. And, you know, so you can use your intuition to see what you're supposed to do with that. But there's definitely a lot of energy around partnering and doing something for the long term. On November 9th, we've got the Sun in Scorpio making a great aspect to Pluto and Capricorn. Again, this is one that you would need to take action on to get its most um, positive attributes. And this has to do with bonding with other people in deep ways. So, you know, in love, in money, in business, you know, so you can kind of see this theme of, of partnership. And this is being brought over from the energies in Scorpio, some energy still in Libra. Libra and Scorpio are, are partnership energies. So just, um, it has to do with self and it has to do with how we relate to others, which is a very common theme for this month. We'll look out on the 13th, or let's see, the 11th first. Um, we've got another beautiful aspect. Now this is a really big deal because sat when outer planets, the ones that take a really long time to move around, make aspects to each other, these themes last for a long time because they, they, come together and then they retrograde apart and then they come together again and they, they, they like follow this flow over an extended period of time where there's a long-term theme. So this is the last of the three brilliant matchups of this um, Saturn and Uranus energy. And these are very different energies. Saturn is long-term ground building foundational and Uranus is out of the blue, surprises can be unstable and Saturn is stable, you know, so it's like this coming together of opposites in a way, in a beautiful configuration. So the first time this happened was December 24th, 2016. The second time it happened was May 19th of 2017. And then this is the third time. So it can really bring stability and expansion through the combination of innovation and technology because Uranus rules innovation and technology. So this, this transit lasts well beyond the date of November 11th. You'll feel it in the weeks before or weeks after. Sensitive people will have felt it as a long-term theme for almost a year. So on the 13th, we've got a really fantastic aspect for merging. This, this, there's so much energy that's really good for weddings, for partnerships coming together. Like I said, they're, it's a mixed bag because there's you know the challenges and the fears that come with it and maybe the red flags even. But Venus matching up with Jupiter is one of the best combinations for love and money, you know, because Jupiter's a great expander and Venus rules love and money. So it can very thoroughly expand. Anything that you do on this day or around this day, as far as money or love, can be very, very powerful and transformational. So I really love it as a launch date for business things. You know, again, you just have to feel in because there is an aspect on the same day where Mercury, which, which is ruling communication, is in Neptune, is squaring Neptune. And that can mean you're not seeing things clearly, you know? So if you've already done all of the work where you have to, you know, do your testing to make sure everything is cool to move forward, then this could just be a little blip. But if you're just meeting someone at this time, there could be an intense meeting, either romantic or otherwise, but there's this piece where you're not maybe not seeing everything really clearly as well. So you just have to look out for that. On 
the 16th, Venus in Scorpio is making a beautiful aspect to Neptune. And this is wonderful for emotions and intimacy. You can see our theme of this partnership um, and coming together continues. Now, if you are someone who is moving through this time and you're not merging with people in any way, that doesn't mean that the transformation can't abound prolifically because Scorpio energy is um, very deep and can be very individual, even though it does represent the merging of energies as well, but an individual going on a deep transformational journey can very much embody this energy because it's the story of going deep into the self as well. So you can do really deep inner work with this, um, solve mysteries, answer, you know, find answers to problems, find solutions. There's a lot of different ways you can use this besides merging with other people. So on the 16th, we also have the sun in a beautiful aspect with um, Chiron. So Chiron coming up again, you know, this has to do with your forgiveness of self helping all of your relationships, you know, when it comes back down to it, to simplify so many things in life, we are mad at ourselves and we project it on other people and everything becomes a mess. You know, it's really simple. So self-forgiveness and anything we do with self-forgiveness can be very greatly assisted this month. And that's part of training your hero. Okay, so then on the 17th, we have Mercury and Sag making a trine to Mars, and this is awesome for bringing thoughts into action. So Mercury and Sag is very busy mentally. You know, even though November 17th is technically in the pre-shadow period, you still can push some good things through on this day. Um, then we've got our new moon at 26 degrees of Scorpio on November 18th, and this is time to make your new moon wishes. New moon wishes are real, just like birthday wishes are real. You know, you've got this new open window, especially when you align your wishes with the sign that the new moon is in. You can check out my website for a blog about this. Um, it's called Making Powerful New Moon Wishes in Scorpio. You just go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com and go in the blog, go in astrology and search for new moon wishes Scorpio. You can have a good guideline for how you can maximize these wishes. And I have those every month for every sign. So you can always find them there. But to, to summarize, you know, you want to use those Scorpio related things that I talked about earlier, partnership, other people's money, deep finances, astrology, psychology, things like that, and align your wishes in those arenas for powerful transformation. This new moon is also going to be making a beautiful trine to Chiron, right? We keep talking about Chiron this month, so it's bringing strength and empowerment and interdependence. There's also a conflict with Mars and Pluto on the 19th that could show up as part of this new moon. Um, Mars squaring Pluto is always a little bit nasty. You know, I'm an optimist. I like to look at the, the bright side of things, but I will always tell you when I see an aspect that's yucky, you know? It's not that you can't do something good with it. I hope that you will. That's my mantra is challenging aspects are here for us to push through resistance and um, clear out issues that are interfering with our highest expression. But it can be kind of nasty, you know, um, aggression, uh, violence, you know, all of these things. If you are to try to avoid circumstances where things like that could occur, be very careful driving, you know, don't antagonize a crazy person. Things like that are good to avoid when you have a conflict with Mars, which is the ruler of war, and Pluto, the ruler of the underworld. So um, this first occurred on Fe uh, February 22nd, and it definitely brings the need to carry extra awareness because it will definitely bring stress and conflict in many cases. Um, partnership commitments or unwelcome opinions from key relationships may come up and how you respond to them could be part of the manifestation of this transit as well. By November 21st, that energy has cleared. We've got Venus and Scorpio making a great angle to Pluto. So now maybe that conflict brought things up and now there's a smoothing over point. Um, this can be very intense emotional or romantic experiences. This can have to do with um, amazing financial opportunities. So like I said, I had mentioned earlier that there'd be a few spots that would be okay for pushing some things through that are last minute things. You know, I don't love them as my as as the big launches if you can help it only because you're kind of getting into that murky retrograde energy. But if you've got to push some last minute things through, November 17th was a good time. 
um, November 21st has some good energies. And on the 22nd, we have Neptune going direct in Pisces. So of course, anything that Neptune does is going to affect everybody, but it will affect Pisces even more when you're ruling planet. It's not just because Neptune's in the sign of Pisces, it's because Neptune rules the sign Pisces. So this is um, a very sobering time, you know, so it's good for becoming practical and organized and making the abstract more concrete. On the 25th, we have a beautiful aspect with Mercury in Sagittarius, trining Uranus and Aries. Um, and like I had said before, even though Mercury shadow period is happening, there are going to be people whose stuff starts to break down at this time and they need to get new devices. This would be a la you know, a good point to push through, like if you have to get in a vehicle, if you have to get um, a device. If you haven't done it earlier in the month and things start to break down now from the shadow period having begun, this at least carries some good energy um, if you have to get some of those new things for things ruling communication and transportation. On the 26th, we have Venus and Scorpio making a trine to Chiron and Pisces. So this is really... Um, empowering for finances or your self-esteem or your romance sector. On the 27th and 28th, we have Mercury and Sagittarius making a conjunction to Saturn and Sagittarius. So big picture dreams, which is rule, you know, Sagittarius rules big picture dreams, may need some harnessing and organizing now. That's the influence of Saturn. Um, so that's possible how it could manifest for you. Alternatively, hard work done to rein in scattered efforts can be very much rewarded. You know, since Saturn can be kind of serious and Sag can be light, sometimes the coming together of these energies can be something annoying and lim limiting to our, our flow and our expansion. Um, but if you use the energy right, then it can be very productive, especially for long-term ventures. So these are the things that are most on my mind for the month of November for everybody. Definitely check out my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog. Check out my new school, my Astaria School of Practical Magic. If you are an empath, if you are a sensitive person trying to navigate in this crazy world and it feels like the rules are different for you and you don't know why everything um, is different than mainstream for you, it's definitely an amazing and magical, wonderful support system. Um, so you can check that out at AnnieHelpsYou.com. Also, definitely check out my husband, B.R. Newman's Tarot Scopes. Um, you can go to IamHelios.com, I-A-M-H-E-L-I-O-S.com. If you haven't already signed up for my free email newsletter, then definitely do that on my website at AnnieHelpsYou.com. And if you have signed up for my newsletter and you're not getting it, we need to figure this out because I send it out religiously every month, a month early. I always have. I will as long as I can. <laughs> and so if you're not getting it, something's going on with your inbox. Um, it could be in spam. It could be in social promotion events folders. If you use the contact uh, with your in your welcome letter that I send, there's a contact address that I say to add. Um, and when you add that to your contacts, it gives the message to your email service to put things from me right into your inbox instead of one of those other folders. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.